Hello guys, recently, roughly a month ago, I saw this tweet by Tony, he was launching Wave version 3, the new or updated or revamped SAS starter kit for Laravel. And I decided to try it out. So in this video, I will give an overview, we'll go through the official documentation and the features, and also I asked my colleague Nerius to create the demo project. So we'll dive into the code, how we created this page based on Wave version 3. And the link to the repository with that project will be available in the description below. Also, so at the end of this video, I will mention other alternative Laravel starter kits. I see more of them released in 2023 and 2024, and I will give my opinion about the current state of the market of starter kits, SaaS starter kits for Laravel. So let's begin by visiting the homepage of Wave, the fastest way to ship your SaaS product. And if you are a Laravel developer for a while and that shipping theme sounds familiar to you, Maybe you will remember Voyager admin panel created by the same team at Dev Dojo and Tony, which seems to be not that popular anymore, especially with filament on the rise. But I just wanted to point that out. It's the same creators. Now, what do we have on their homepage? Of course, they're listing the features, which is authentication powered by the own, by the way, package for authentication. So it's not Laravel Breeze or anything. And then you have typical things for SaaS like pages, dashboard and other features. And I will demonstrate them to you. But probably the most important in a way feature is that it is 100% free to use, which is different from other SaaS starter kits I will show at the end of this video. Most of them are paid and quite expensive, but Wave is free. And I tried to dig a bit deeper in the business model. So why it is free, probably they should earn money from somewhere. And it's a weird scenario. Maybe Tony, if you're watching this video, maybe you will comment on that or maybe someone else knows because Dev Dojo is kind of a portal with a lot of things. So they have products, they have community and they have premium courses. And on the official Dev Dojo Pro website, Wave is listed as one of the perks to sign up for the Pro membership alongside other tools like training program like Markdown X, premium courses and others. So I'm not entirely sure if the Wave is free or there are some paid plugins or themes planned in the future maybe, but it might be a good idea to subscribe to Dev Dojo Pro anyway to support Tony for all of his and his team's products and join the community of Dev Dojo. Currently the pricing is this on their homepage. By the way, I'm not affiliated. I don't get paid for this video. I just genuinely like what Tony has been doing for many years since I've been a developer in Laravel 4 and 5 days with Voyager and even before that. So I like to support the active creators. Now back to Wave functionality. If we take a look at the official documentation, it contains a bit more detailed list of features. So a pretty typical thing for a typical SaaS with Laravel. And also it lists the technology. The tech stack is Laravel, Livewire, Tailwind, Alpine, and Vite. Basically tall stack. On top of that, they use Filament for admin panel. And I will demonstrate that to you a few of their own packages and they use Spotty for Laravel permissions and they use Laravel Folio and Vault. And on those, we will stop in a few minutes. Those are pretty important. If we take a look at the official demo of Wave, this is how it looks, the homepage. Then you go to the dashboard and basically this is how it looks. So the dashboard may contain all the links and features. That's what they created. And then you create menu items on the left in the sidebar and then create pages. So when you click here, currently Wave shows just the notification, modify this button inside of sidebar blade PHP, basically just instruction how to use Wave, but also down below there are links to settings, for example. So each user has settings profile page, including the subscription where you manage roles and permissions and plans for Stripe and Paddle. You can choose the payment provider between those two. But this is not demonstrated in the official demo. That's why we decided to create our own. So the task for my colleague Nerius was to create the database of to-do list, tasks and projects, two database tables, and then users would be able to create task and delete tasks, basically simple CRUD, but then the pro version would be able to access the projects feature, which by default redirects to billing page if they don't have the access and add more than 10 tasks. This was the idea. Now let's see how it looks in the code. So our impression after creating that project has good and bad parts. Again, I'm not affiliated. So this is unbiased review from a person or two people who tried it for the first time. Maybe we don't know something. Maybe we didn't read some part of the documentation. We can discuss in the comments below. So the good parts of Wave are about setting up billing and subscription plans. It's very easy. So this is the documentation 
presentation you can use a stripe or paddle and all you need to do to set that up is provide a few configuration options basically which do you use in the config add the credentials to your .env file configure the webhooks with your url and then in the subscription plans documentation you add the plans in the admin dashboard which you can see on the screen and then those plans are attached with the roles and then whenever you want to restrict some feature you check either the plan or the role i'm not entirely sure which is better they probably are almost identical in most times but they recommend to check the role and you can read the full documentation how to set that all up from stripe you need to get the ids from your products and pricing and set that up in the admin panel which then just saves them to the database so this is the database the database table of plans and we have pro plan with monthly and yearly price ids from stripe so when you set that all up your users will see the subscription page monthly or yearly if they try to access some feature which they didn't pay for yet so that's the good part setting up payments was very easy and this is where i will show you the admin panel so i've re-logged in with admin user and here we have view admin which redirects us to filament admin panel so here you can set up plans roles and other things i'm a big fan of filament myself i have a second channel filament daily and filamentexamples.com website so i'm glad about this move off wave to use filament as the backend admin panel for their starter kit and now i will show you how in wave you can create your own functionality like we did with crud of tasks and projects menu items and this part of wave is in my opinion not so great let me show you so in the official documentation your functionality basically how to create your custom pages or custom menu items they have a recommended approach to use single file vault pages with live wire vault so in their recommended example pretty similar to our own they create the database migrations and models and then this so to create the page in the sidebar with some functionality you create a blade file which contains all the logic the routing is powered by folio which auto detects the index blade from specific folder and then in the sidebar all you need to add the link is to add the route to slash projects and the logic is powered by livewire vault which allows you to do everything in the blade file without any controller without any live wire component no mvc just the blade file so we tried to create the same thing in our repository and this is the result so we had to create tasks index blade with this code so on top you have live wire vault and folio logic then you create the methods inside and then you have the layout inside so basically all in the same file and then the link for example to tasks create points to another page in the same commit i will show you so the create file looks like this tasks create blade also vault header also component with some validation and then the html reusing the components the blade components so you do form wire submit so this is live wire but single page components with live wire vault version so this part makes wave very opinionated as a starter kit in fact if you think about it every starter kit has some kind of level of being opinionated they all do things in their own way not necessarily in standard laravel way so even the authentication of dev dojo separate package you can call it opinionated if you go back to the documentation page of your functionality they emphasize you're completely free to choose how to structure your application so you don't have to necessarily use vault and folio they specifically chose that pattern and those tools to simplify the creation of default pages and custom pages and for some people it may be a benefit but i'm pretty sure if you want to create more custom pages more complex pages you would totally need to create not live wire vault components but full live wire components or maybe even laravel controllers i'm not even sure if you can use that wave without live wire you probably can but i haven't tried 
So basically, if you want to go not recommended way of wave without folio and vault, you're on your own. It's not in the docs. But actually, at some point with any starter kit, you just need to forget the starter kit and start coding with Laravel and PHP and add your custom logic. And if you're not familiar with Vault and Folio, the documentation contains separate page about Vault pages, how does it work, and also I have a few videos on my own channel, so I will link those in the description below. Vault and Folio, as I remember, they were released in the summer of 2023 at one of the Laracons. Now, a few more features I want to show you from our repository is how do you restrict, for example, the menu item. So it changes from X sidebar link to if statement in the form of subscribed. So subscribed and subscribed and else. If they're not subscribed, then you can redirect to settings subscription. So you can check that by subscribed or another way of doing the same thing is has role, which is powered by Spotty Laravel permission. And you can also use that in the validation, for example. So auth user has role can be used on the backend. Although again, looking at blade file and calling it a backend, I have a weird feeling about this, but it's a personal preference. And then how to organize that free plan. So task list, whenever someone wants to access the project, they are on free plan and need to upgrade. Also new task redirects to the same thing, or in fact, to a separate page subscription limit with pricing included as kind of include partial. So we implemented it in this way. You need to provide the default user role as registered and free. So we created a separate plan called free plan with the role. So role stable seater and plan stable seater contain another free plan and free role, which is by default assigned to any new user. And then in the create blade of creating task in the mode in kind of the construct there's a check. If you are trying to create the 11th task, then you are redirected to route limit and limit is a page, another blade component with vault and folio showing that you are not on pro plan and including the marketing section pricing to subscribe. So yeah, this is the first impression from Wave, good and bad parts and my personal opinion. If you like the philosophy of structuring the code, the quick setup with SAS plans for Stripe and Paddle, and the fact that it is free, I totally recommend you to at least try Wave for yourself. And now at the end of the video, I promise to show you other alternatives, Laravel SAS starter kits. And recently I found a special website that compiled the list of those. I felt in recent year or so that there are more and more new starter kits appearing, but I didn't realize that there were so many. So let's look at the list. So the first on the list is Laravel Spark, which is my personal preference official from Taylor Otwell and Laravel team. And we use it ourselves for the backend of Laravel Daily.com website. It's kind of the OG, still works, still actively maintained. Although Taylor and the team, they don't talk about it that much from stage. It's not actively advertised, but I personally like it. But then over the last year or two, as I said, new competitors appeared. So Sassy Kit, Lara Fast, haven't tried either of those, but from here is just getting started. So launch your SaaS in days with Jetship. Then Larazos is for filament project, it seems. Zapkit is AI powered Laravel boilerplate, whatever that means. Then you have Artiplate, you have Nana, you have Lara starters by Laravel Daily. This is a package actually to start the design on top of Laravel Breeze. It shouldn't even be in the list and not recommended. It. It's our own, but we don't actively work on that much anymore. Then you have Wave on the list here, then you have Wizzy for Filament, then you have React Starter Kit, Laramant, and even Tenancy for Laravel, the package for multi-tenancy have their own boilerplate, then you have Electric, Rapid SaaS Conduit, and a few more, including the official starter kits, not SaaS, but Laravel starter kits, Breeze and Jetstream. And the final is Boring Directory at the end. So what do I mean by this list? I haven't tried majority of them, but what I see on Twitter, on Reddit, on Product Hunt, and following the creators, some of the creators of those tools, I don't see any overwhelming success stories that any of those tools would skyrocket in popularity and be very much used by Laravel community members. They all feel pretty niche, and created for their own kind of groups of developers who believe in the philosophy and in the structure of that particular starter kit. 
but also what I felt, and correct me if I'm wrong, and we can discuss that in the comments, that the market is oversaturated with those starter kits, and people are in a way disappointed by majority of them because they realize they bump into issues as soon as they try to customize those starter kits because each starter kit comes with their own functionality and their own opinionated choices of tech stack, tools, packages, the way how to structure things, and so on. So it seems good on the surface, but then you may lose time and money on trying to customize or even bump into issues that some starter kit is in your way of building your own functionality. So I think this is the sentiment from the market and starter kit and SaaS starter kit was kind of sexy a few years ago, but none of those really took off, including the official Laravel Spark. That's maybe why it's not talked much about these days. And in the comments below, we can discuss what starter kits have you tried, free or paid, what was your impression? What would you recommend? Or do you start your or your client's SaaS project from scratch without any external starter kit? I have a feeling that this is done by majority of developers these days, but I may be wrong. Let's discuss in the comments below. And if you want me to review any of those on the list here, also point which one and why. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.